Um, hope you are doing well. It is 8.24 a.m. So I looked back on previous video and on other videos and I wanted to kind of gauge what you guys wanted to see. So I thought it'd be super beneficial to make a video on how to move to Seattle, how to find an apartment in Seattle because um, when Gus and I were looking, it was a really hard thing to do. So I, I'm gonna give you guys a couple tips um, and a couple price points so that you guys feel a little bit more comfortable if you're moving out here. I hope you guys enjoy this video. Let's just get started. Okay guys, so tip number one is that you should know that the market moves extremely fast. That being said, it is much easier to find a place when you're actually there. Gus and I never visited Seattle and we never been there before we actually moved. So it's so possible to find a place. Here's some tips on how to do it. So there's an amazing Facebook group. Um, I'll put the link right here um, and I'll also put it in the description box, but it's amazing. So that's how Gus and I found our very first place. It's a Facebook group all geared around Seattle housing and like rooms and sublets. And there's about 17,000 people in that group. So every day people are posting like, I need a sublet for this place or in August, I need somebody to take over my lease. It's a really good tool to find a place and that's how we found our first place and we loved it. If it wasn't temporary, we would have wanted to stay. It was with safe people. I remember when we first found our place, we actually like video chatted with the roommates before we actually moved out there. So it was super legit. We got to meet them. They got to meet us even though we were in Wisconsin and um, the, price, the, the place was super reasonable and it was a really good way for us to get our feet on the ground. So I would definitely recommend checking that out. Um, other websites you can also check out, you know, you got Craigslist. You do have to be careful on Craigslist though. There's a lot of scams on it. I know when Gus and I first started looking, I found a place and I was like, this place is cheap. It's great. The owners are nice. Um, and it was 100% a scam. So if you get emails like, oh, like, you know, my family, we actually were out of town. We're, you know, overseas, but we rent out the place. Scam. So if you get emails like that, you guys, it's 100% a scam every single time. Um, just don't respond to that and move on and try to find another place. Usually, if it's too good to be true, it's too good to be true. No, if the people, if the landlords aren't physically there or like you can't like call them or FaceTime them, all those red flags, like if you can't do any of those things, then it's a scam. So watch out for that. Um, Zillow's another one. I, I don't really like Zillow. Um, I, I never find a place on there and it, it does move very fast, but um, it's not as uh, like real and hands-on, I feel like, as like Facebook, um, but Zillow is another good one, I guess. Hot Pads is actually pretty good. I like Hot Pads a lot. Um, you can just type in like where you want to find a place and they come up with a list. So Hot Pads is another one and Apartments.com is another one that I don't usually, I usually dabble with Apartments.com, but Hot Pads, Craigslist, Facebook, those are my top three, but definitely check out the Facebook group because especially if you're like just trying to find a place and move quick, I think Facebook's a really, really good option for that. Okay guys, so now we're gonna get into like one bedroom versus two bedroom and getting random roommates and stuff. So a one bedroom, if you're looking to move alone, usually costs about $1,200 and up. I'm sure you could find a cheaper place, um, but if you're trying to live in Seattle, $1,200 is probably the lowest. Um, unless you know somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody, but 1200 is pretty reasonable for a one bedroom And that could be a studio not a one bedroom, but like a studio So 1200 or higher for a two bedroom. I would say at least 1500 plus and that's not counting parking um, Water sewage and garbage or any other bills. That's just like a flat rate of 1500 um, In Seattle and that's pretty lucky if you can find a place for 1500 it's a two bedroom in Seattle, you're you're doing something right. Gus and I, we pay we pay about 1,500, and we live um, about 15 miles outside of the city, and that's pretty cheap. So um, that's how much it is. If you're looking to move downtown, then it's going to be around 1,800 minimum, if not higher. So one bedroom is going to be at least $1,200 if not more and for a two bedroom that's going to run you about 1500 at the very minimum but now if you're going to move downtown at least 18 or 1900 for a two bedroom check that out i do apartment searching like every day because gus and i are moving in august i i look every day and i i don't i haven't really found a place cheaper than that 
that's like a six month lease or a year lease, not temporary. If it's temporary, sometimes it's lower. So make sure to watch out for that. Like if you only need to be in Seattle for six months or want a place for a couple months to move, then it's gonna be cheaper, so. Another thing to take into consideration is parking. Parking is very limited because um, there's so many people in Seattle. And um, with that being said, there's not enough parking spaces. So parking is usually pretty expensive. A minimum for parking downtown is gonna be 100 bucks. I think that's pretty accurate. Right now, Gus and I don't live downtown and we are paying $100 a month for parking. The least I've seen parking is 100 and the most I've seen parking is about $300. So, and that's per month. Make sure that you put that into consideration as well. And if you're looking for a place, make sure to ask because if you're from a little town in Wisconsin where there's plenty of space to park, there's just no places to park in Seattle. If you have a car and parking is important to you, make sure that that's something you ask because sometimes we can forget about our cars and that, oh, there's parking things. Like, I don't know. Just make sure that you ask if it's something that you need because it's not always available. Okay, another thing to take into consideration is the lease terms. There's, so there's a couple different leases and um, I'm from a little town in Wisconsin, so, um, I'm not used to like, oh, like a two month lease or whatever, you know? So there's a couple different leases that are pretty common, but a six month lease is really common and a year lease is really common. Um, I would suggest doing a six month lease. If, if we could have, I would have done a six month lease because one, they're really nice and that's basically temporary and you can always sign up again if you like it. But if you hate it and you hate your neighbors or you hate the landlord, you can be out of there in six months and that's not that long of a time. So. Um, six month leases are really common as well as one year leases. Now I kind of want to talk about like where you should live because this is like the biggest one, right? Um, when Gus and I were first moving out here, we had no idea what Seattle was, what places they were to live. We just thought, oh, we're going to live in Seattle and that's it. But there's a bunch of little like sub cities within Seattle. So I'm going to go down the, the line kind of and talk about places that I really like. I think at the end of the day, you guys want to live in a safe place that's close to the city and nice that's that's what i want and i i don't know if that's what you guys want but these are these are places that i think are safe and fun and kind of geared towards different groups and age groups and stuff so place number one u village u village is the last stop or the first stop on however you want to look at it on the light rail so um u village is where the university lays right so um, the UW system in Washington is all there and there's a light rail station there. So a lot of student housing is over there. It's base, it's close to Cap Hill. Um, it's, it's nice um, and it's kind of expensive, but there's a lot of students there and there's a lot of people always posting like sublets and I need a place, I need somebody to take over my lease type thing. So if you're looking, if you're a student and you're looking to come over there, U Village might be a good option for you. And it's really close to the light rail station. So the light rail station could take you all over. Okay, the second place is Cap Hill. Cap Hill is probably the most popular place to live in Seattle at the moment. I think um, that's where Gus and I are trying to live, but it's, expensive. Cap Hills are ex really expensive, but it's like a good nightlife scene, a really good music scene, um, and it's a lot of fun. So like if you're not looking to like be around nightlife or have a lot of fun, if you want to be more settled down, I would not live at Cap Hill. Cap Hill is very like downtown type of like let's go out and drink or let's go li listen to live music type thing. Um, that's what Cap Hill is. There's a lot of students, there's a lot of age ranges. Um, but it's just a very diverse melting pot full of people and um, It's a ton of fun. I don't know. We really like Cap Hill and we want to experience it So that's kind of where we're trying to find a place, but it is it's really crowded and it's, it's expensive But it's it's pretty fun. I don't know. I, we like it when I think of Cap Hill. It's like kids adults a melting pot full of cultures and people and it's just, it's fun. It's a fun experience. And it has a light rail station that goes through it. I wanna talk about downtown Seattle a little, a little bit because when I think of downtown Seattle, it's gonna be like where the Nordstrom is and where like all the buildings are, right? So that's downtown and the light rail station that goes through there is called Westlake. So that comes after Cap Hill. So if we start with U Village, it's gonna go to Cap Hill and then it's gonna go to Westlake. Um, I didn't put this on a place where I wanted to live because it's, 
it's city life so it's just tall buildings it's extremely expensive and i we're just not ready for that if you're really mature if you're businessy if you work downtown it might be nice to live there and definitely age range i think is a little bit higher i would say 30s and up um, but obviously there's kids that, that live there as well, but it's a little bit more of a mature type of scenery. The next place I want to talk about is Columbia City. Columbia City was um, the first place that Gus and I moved to when we first went to Seattle and we loved it. So Columbia City is very family oriented. Um, it's a safe place to live. They have a cute little downtown area and it also has a light rail going through it. So if you do work downtown or work more south, you have the opportunity to just ride the light rail to work, but very close to downtown still. So Columbia City is a really nice one to check out. Um, price points basically stay the same though. So the next couple places to look are gonna be Ballard, Fremont, and Tukawala. I'll talk about Tukawala, but like Ballard is going to be nice. It's going to be more north, so there isn't a light rail that goes through Ballard, but it's still a really cute area and very close to downtown. Um, there's a lot to do in Ballard. It's, it's you know, close to the water and it's a really beautiful place. There's a video where Gus and I go to Ballard and I will link that down in the description box because um, that kind of shows you guys Ballard as well. And there's a lot to do, it's cute and it's very family friendly, but it is very expensive as well. Another place is Fremont. Fremont is really nice. It's close to downtown. It doesn't have a light rail that goes through it, but um, the downtown is so cute and they have some really amazing shops over there too. Good food, good shops. Um, and really cute places. So Fremont's an awesome area to live. And then the last place we're gonna talk about is Tukwila. Tukwila is 15 miles outside the city, but still has a light rail that goes through it. Um, Tukwila, Washington is very, very close to the airport. So, which is not a big deal at all. And it's a lot cheaper. So if you're not looking to live right in town, Tukwila might be a good option, but we, we don't like it. There's not really a downtown there and there's not really much to do. There's like a mall there, which is great, but you can't walk to it really. You gotta drive to it. And um, we wanna be like able to walk to a coffee shop or walk to a place to eat. And there's not really that in Tukwila. Okay guys, so that's kind of all I have for you. I hope those tips and tricks kind of helped. Um, I think that Facebook group is a really big one. So I'll definitely post that in the description box below. Um, that helped Gus and I out so much. So definitely check that out. Um, if you have any questions, definitely comment below. I try to get back to all of you guys. Um, you can always DM me on Instagram. I'm on Instagram all the time. I will put my username here always on there. So feel free to DM me on Instagram if that's easier. Definitely comment below if you have any questions. I would love to answer them. I love communicating with you guys and trying to help you because I wish that I would have had something like this when we were moving out there. It would have made things a lot easier. So as always, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate your support. Comment below what you want to see and I will see you in my next video. Bye!